Some women manage to survive on their own by running small businesses. Tell us what we're looking at in this, this letter. This is actually a widow. Her husband ran a general store or something where she, he dealt with uh, uh, both suppliers and purchasers. And when he died, she took over. And this letter is wonderful because she really takes over. And she sends a letter to a client of some, and she says, uh, you owe me money, and you better deliver, or you're not going to get anything from me again. Uh, uh, basically, I mean business. And it must have come as a shock, because you get a sense that he thinks she's just temporarily there until a man takes over the, the business, but Mary Alexander is going to run this operation and possibly more rigorously than her husband did because apparently this man has owed her money for quite some time. Uh, and she's, she's coming in and she's letting him know that she is in charge. And so that's a wonderful example of the ways in which women may have been uh, subservient to their husbands, I just say, may have been in an inferior position. But we really even have court cases in which a woman picks up one of those very heavy items and belts her husband over the head because she's mad at him. I mean, there, there were many ways in which women did not take oppression lightly. And so this is a good example of the way in which a woman could assert herself to men in, an, in a, actually a very non-traditional role. Right. But in this case, since she was a widow, it's also a very good example of how a woman might take over yes, the yes, occupation the, the of the business. husband. And, and I don't know her personal history, but I'd be willing to bet she's not going to marry the first guy who comes along long. and takes over. Yes.